BioV is working on a novel anti-inflammatory agent with broad implications for neurology. And with me is the CEO, Kong Do, and also Joe Palumbo, the Chief Medical Officer. Welcome. And I understand that June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. What is BioV doing to support this? You know, several years ago, we started a nonprofit organization called S Social Impact Partners. And what we're trying to do is to bring together different organizations from the private, public, and government sectors to collaborate and work in an integrated manner to help Alzheimer's patients in a much different way. So that's underway. But frankly, most of our time is spent on things that we can directly impact, which are clinical trials in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and long COVID. Now, Joe, uh, you're the chief medical officer of BioV. What can you tell us about what you have done in Alzheimer's? So what the company and I have done is really very exciting. We've very recently published results from our uh, first large study in, in Alzheimer's. Um, and what we were able to discern in those patients who complied with our protocol was we were able to slow the progression of their symptoms by close to 70%, 68%, which is really more than double uh, what we see in other studies, looking at some of the, the large molecules that are currently approved, we saw our effects in about a half a year, and they take about 18 months. And so we're very pleased with that, and we're really eager to do our next studies. And I understand you had some interesting findings regarding longevity and biological aging from this Alzheimer's trial as well. So can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, before Joe gives you the science and the data behind it, let me just start with an analogy. So think about a DVD, right? When you first take a DVD out, its packaging is pristinely clean. When you put it into the player, the laser has no trouble decoding the information that's on that disc. As a result, you'll get bit, great pictures and sound and playback. But over the years, you can as you use it over and over again. You may get scratches, fingerprint smudges on it. And as a result, the laser then would have trouble reading through all that gunk to decode the information. And that's why you get the skips and the stutters and so forth. Well, exactly the same thing happens in our body. Because as you know, everything is encoded for by our genes and our DNA. And as we age, there's a natural process called DNA methylation that takes place whereby different methyl groups gets added to the surface of our DNA. And as that accumulates, the molecules that are responsible for decoding our DNA has trouble reading through all that gunk, right? And that's why the hypermethylation of DNA has been associated with a large number of diseases, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and so forth, right? So that's the context. And now, Joe, can you explain it? <laughs> uh, absolutely. So th this process of methylation, in a way, you can almost think of it like rust, right? So you, you don't want to see accumulate uh, on the DNA because the DNA is what makes your proteins. The DNA is what helps us to defend against invaders, et cetera, et cetera. The number one sort of culprit in, in creating this methylation is aging, right? And other things go along with aging that are kind of bad, like smoking, alcohol, these things uh, that make, that we all understand make you age a little bit more quickly. So what I can tell you is that in our studies, we looked at something called uh, clocks, and these are either methylation clocks, aging clocks. So, for instance, you can look at an aging clock and look at the effect of, say, smoking in a number of pack years, and you can see age begin to accelerate versus normal, right? What we saw in multiple clocks, and modified uh, in many different ways to look at different angles on, on methylation and different angles on, on aging, we were able to show a slowing of the aging process. Now, that doesn't mean we're making people younger, but it's certainly quite provocative. And, and we look at the same thing uh, with clocks related to uh, inflammation. And inflammation, as you know, drives a lot of what we see in aging disorders. Um, and again, we seem to be slowing that. So we're really excited about what this might mean. Now, does this mean you can't affect the aging process or even reverse it? Uh, we're certainly hopeful, right? It's what, what we're saying is we are not reversing aging. We all get 
older. There's nothing we can do about that, right? But these biological clocks give us a measure of our actual biological aging process at a molecular level, right? And what we're seeing from our results is that patients treated with Bezzy's theorem for just six months are having about a five years advantage, right, on age deceleration. So think of it as the rusting process, right? So if we can use Bessie's theorem to remove or simply prevent five years worth of rust buildup, right? That's a big deal. So what we're hoping to show over time is that as we all age, maybe Bessie's theorem could help keep us healthier for a longer period of time to the tune of perhaps even five years worth of health. Okay. And you told us about the Parkinson's trial in your last appearance. Is there an update on that? Oh, very happy to. We've completed our first trial in Parkinson's, and this was a study looking at people with mild to moderate levels of Parkinson's, folks who had what we call breakthrough off symptoms. In other words, they would wake up or during the course of the day, they really couldn't move their muscles, which was a horrible part uh, of the condition. So what we did is in a double blind way, we layered our drug on top of the standard of care. And about a third of our patients were able to enter the on state, that, that is, they could move, uh, whereas those on placebo, none of the uh, individuals in this, in this study were able to do so. We also saw improvements in sleep. So our hope from this first study really is, could we develop a molecule to do what other molecules don't, which is to provide this broad spectrum across both the, the motor symptoms of Parkinson's as well as some of the other accompanying symptoms. So that's what we did in our first study. And you also have a long COVID trial underway. What can you tell us about that? Well, as you know, there are 20 million Americans who suffer from long COVID, and there's nothing out there to help these patients with their terrible debilitating symptoms such as brain fog, fatigue, and malaise. Right? And within the last couple of years, researchers have tied the symptoms to inflammation that works through exactly the same mechanism that Bessie's theorem affects. And since there's nothing out there for these patients, we've received a grant, or in fact, we're the only company that has received a grant to test the therapeutic to see if we can help patients with long COVID symptoms. So we've started that trial. We're now in right in the middle enrolling 200 patients for this trial, working with some of the largest, most prestigious um, academic medical centers out there, right? And we're hoping to have data on that later on this year. So for us, we're actually very excited about the prospect of the next year. As Joe mentioned, in Parkinson's, yes. we've completed one trial. We're now in the middle of another one, and we're hoping to have that trial have complete um, late this year, early part of next year, and the long COVID should be completed by early part of next year as well. Sounds like we're going to be doing some updated interviews. You've got a lot of news coming over yeah, the next this we do. six to nine months yeah. or so, so it'll be exciting. Well, thank you so much, Hong and Joe. Thank you. Thank you for having us.